Hello everyone. Welcome to the session of current affairs. This is the second session in the April month that is second week of the April. I've tried to include almost all the important issues which had happened in the second week of April. And as said earlier, I'm repeating again, the handwritten notes is available at Harsha Zarok Center of Jainagar near Saptapur Dharwad and the Lakshmi Net Point in the Srinagar Dharwad. Guys, please give your valuable feedback or reviews on the video so that we can improve ourselves to give you the best content. Okay, so we shall start with the session quickly. The first issue of second week of April is about the World Health Day. So when is the World Health Day celebrated? World Health Day is celebrated on 7th of April. Okay, and remember, this is mainly to commemorate the anniversary of the founding of the World Health Organization, which was founded in the year 1948. So, you have to remember this. There are chances of asking World Health Day. That is because recently we have faced so many issues like COVID-19 and everything. So, after this, the World Health Day has really, really gained a wide importance. So, there's a very chance of asking this question. So, remember, this is celebrated on 7th April. This is the first point to be remembered here. And second one is, this is mainly to commemorate the anniversary of the founding of the WHO, which was founded in the year 1948. Then, next important point which you have to remember here is, the theme of the World Health Day 2022 was Our Planet, Our Health. Okay, remember, Our Planet, Our Health was the theme of the World Health Day 2022. So, what, ac what actually they meant here was, so this was a unique opportunity or they had presented a unique opportunity for a green and healthy recovery for the COVID-19 patients actually. So that was mainly the theme. So that is why I'm telling there are very chances of asking this. Remember, our planet, our health is the theme. It is celebrated on 7th April and this is mainly to commemorate the anniversary of the WHO which was founded in the year 1948. And the celebration was also sponsored by WHO and also some other related organizations so if a question has been asked what can be asked the question will be world health day is celebrated on so the answer here is april 7th is the answer next issue adb projects india's economy to grow by 7.5 percent in fiscal year 2023 what is adb ADB is Asian Development Bank. So, Asian Development Bank had projected the growth rate of the India as well as South Asia by releasing its flagship that is Asian Development Outlook ADO 2022. Okay. So, here is the news. Releasing its flagship Asian Development Outlook 2022. The Manila based multilateral funding agencies said the growth in South Asia is projected to slow down 7%. Guys, very, very important. Remember, they have projected the declining growth, growth rate for the South Asia. Okay, that will be 7% in 2022. Whereas, uh, the growth rate which is expected for the Indian economy is 7.5% in the fiscal year 2023 and 8% in the fiscal year 2024. So, there are three rates which have to be growth rates which have to be remembered here. Firstly, a declining growth rate for the South Asia that, that too in the year 2022 will be 7% and for the Indian economy, for the fiscal year 2023, the growth rate is, in, is being projected for 7.5% and then for fiscal year 2024, they have projected a growth rate of 8%. Okay, so 7, 7.5 and 8%. So these three have to be remembered. They may ask any growth rate. Okay, so what will be the question if they ask? 
Asian Development Bank or ADB projects India's economy to grow by what percent? We just have seen it. It is 7.5%. Next issue. India's agriculture exports a must question guys. This is a must question compulsory. This will be there in the question paper. Okay. So India's agriculture exports have crossed 50 billion, which is the highest ever for the agricultural exports. I repeat again. So India's agricultural exports. Here is the news. India's agri exports have crossed 50 billion dollars in the fiscal year 22, which is the highest ever for the agricultural exports in India. Fine. Remember this. So here we shall read it quickly. India's exports of agricultural products, including marine for the year 21, 22 have crossed 50 billion dollars. This would be the highest level ever achieved for agricultural exports. Okay. So there are very chances of asking this question. Then which agricultural pro product have got what percentage of exports that we will we'll see here now. So here they have mentioned the ministry said the highest ever exports have been achieved for staples like rice, wheat, sugar and other cereals and meat. So wheat exports have jumped nearly fourfold from 568 million to 2.12 billion in 2021-22. So wheat is 2.12 billion and then Marine products. Here is about the marine products. So marine products is 7.71 billion is marine products. And then remember some more products here. I'll give you the list. See rice. Rice it has gained 9.65 billion dollars. Okay. 9.65 billion dollars which is the highest one. And sugar. Sugar has got how many dollars? It has got 4.6 billion dollars. Rice 9.65 billion dollars and sugar has got 4.6 billion dollars. Then marine products we know. Wheat also we have no. One more added to the list. Spices. Okay. So spices also have got 4 billion dollars this, this time. So remember these three as well marine products and then the wheat so highest is for rice okay highest is for rice that is 9.65 billion dollars okay spices is 4 sugar is 4.6 so if the question has been asked india's highest agricultural export in the fiscal year 2022 was for that was for rice that is 9.65 billion so how about the wheat it was 2.12 billion dollars sugar is 9.85 billion dollars and then spices was 9.65 billion dollars so here they have given so this is correct this option is correct 9.65 billion is correct wheat 9 2.12 uh, so this option is wrong here sugar how much is sugar 4.6 so this is also right wrong and spices spices is 4 billion so this is also wrong so this is the right answer here then next issue anti-tank guided missile helena what is this helena so again a uh, very important issue guys i've picked the most important ones so be very cautious while going through the video so what is helena here so they have mentioned that Helena missile, Helena missile test fired again on day two, this time from high altitude region. So what, what are they trying to tell? See, India carried out a successful test firing of the Helena, which is an anti-tank guided missile from the indigenous advanced light helicopter in the high altitude areas of the Pokhran desert ranges of Rajasthan. I repeat again, Helena is an anti-tank guided missile. Okay, it is an anti-tank guided missile. And this was successfully test fired. Okay, this was successfully test fired from the indigenous, indigenous advanced, 
indigenous advanced light helicopter okay light helicopter in high altitude I repeat again in the high altitude areas of pokhran desert in the rajasthan fine so and this was conducted jointly by drdo this was conducted jointly by drdo the indian army indian army and the indian air force okay this was jointly conducted by this test fire was conducted by drdo indian army and indian air force and remember this very very important note here this is an fire and forget class of missile okay helena is an fire and forget class of missile so they may ask this also that is it it is a fire and forget class or it is related to what kind of or what version of missile remember this is a version of this nag missile okay so remember this where it was where it was test fired it was test fired in the higher altitudes of pokhran desert in the rajasthan so we'll see the question now test firing of helena was conducted by drdo the indian army indian air force so all three have jointly conducted this so all of the above is the answer next one the news is karnataka vikas gramina bank launches new deposit scheme whoever are trying for the karnataka state services be very sure about this news so the scheme which is launched by Vik karnataka vikas gramina bank is vikas siri sampat okay the name is vikas siri sampat 1111 what is this one one i'll explain later okay so this is the scheme which was which has been launched by karnataka vikas gramina bank so here the tenor of the scheme or the duration of the scheme is 1111 days hence it has been named as vikas siri sampat 1111 okay 1111 is 1111 which is the duration of the scheme or the tenor of the scheme and very peculiar characteristics about this is the rate of interest see rate of interest for the general public is 5.70 and for the senior citizens it is 6.20% and it is also offering the highest rate of annualized returns of 6.03% for general public and 6.60 for senior citizens and one more characteristic or feature of this scheme is the here they can minimum they can deposit 10000 okay minimum they can deposit 10000 and maximum they can deposit up to 2 crore minimum they can deposit 10000 maximum they can deposit 2 crores and this was launched by the chairperson of the karnataka vikas gramina bank that is p gopi krishna p gopi krishna see uh, have a knowledge or just have some info on about this bank karnataka vikas gramina bank it is an rrb it is an rrb which is sponsored by i'll write it here it is an rrb which is sponsored by canara bank okay it is it is sponsored by canara bank and it started on 12th september 12th september 2005 2005 and headquarters okay headquarters is in dharwad many a times uh, the headquarters of various banks or the sponsors of the various sub banks have been asked in the examination especially people who are preparing for psi and all these questions these kind of questions will be more 
so please uh, have keep a eye on this particular information okay so it is an rrb which is sponsored by canra bank which is started in uh, year 2005 12 september and headquarters is in dharwad the question is vikas siri sampath 1111 is launched in which state so of course we know it now it is karnataka okay then the next issue so looking into the picture so we can definitely guess this is about a kind of silk or wool all right so let me read out from the himalayan highlands of leh ladakh to the banks of river gangas in varanasi the heritage handicraft of pashmina has got a brand new identity so here we are speaking about banarasi okay we are speaking about banarasi pashmina banarasi pashmina is the topic of the news see uh, khadi and village industries commission has launched banarasi pashmina in varanasi okay so remember this why it is so important is this is for the first time that pashmina products have been produced outside the region region of leh ladakh and jammu and kashmir this pashmina only pashmina okay so only pashmina is actually native from leh ladakh and the regions of other and few regions of jammu and kashmir so other than that these products were not available anywhere else so for the first time these products are out of leh ladakh and jammu and kashmir and they have reached to varanasi and that is been named as banarasi pashmina okay banarasi pashmina and the first two uh, pashmina shawls which were produced by the weavers in varanasi were presented to prime minister narendra modi so some peculiar characteristics about this particular pashmina wool is see there is a form of goat called as changtangi goats okay changtangi goats which are indigenous to the high altitude regions of ladakh and they are raised for the ultra fine kashmir wool sorry there's a spelling mistake here okay so it is k a s h m e c a s h m e r e kashmiri wool okay changtangi goats are the goats which are exclusively reared to opt the kashmiri wool which is known as the pashmina okay so in leh ladakh and jammu and kashmir it is simply known as pashmina and in case of varanasi now where it has been introduced newly it is called as banarasi pashmina and for the first time for the first time in the india we can see this particular pashmina wool outside the jammu and kashmir or leh ladakh fine and the first two shawls which were woven by the weavers is been presented to prime minister narendra modi so we'll, we shall see the question now what type of goats are raised for ultra fine kashmiri wool known as pashmina so it is changtangi we know it now okay so the next issue saksham 2022 campaigns begin in the state okay very important see when you see this particular world saksham so you this saksham name gives some other idea but which is really uh a conf- which is really a wrong idea because hearing to the word saksham it feels like it speaks about some commercial product or some uh, electric product electronic products or it scheme but no it is something else see this is a news from manipur okay this is a news from manipur so saksham 2022 is a campaign which is being organized by public sector oil and gas companies of the state in collaboration with uh, petroleum conservation research association that is pcra under the aegis of union ministry of petroleum and natural gas so see this is an annual one month long people centric fuel conservation campaign okay i repeat it again this is an annual one month that is 
every one month in a year is been chosen and this particular campaign is been held and this is a people centric fuel conservation campaign of the petroleum conservation research association that is pcra what is its objective its objective is to spread the message of fuel conservation and greener environment across india so the campaign is been held in the manipur and they are spreading the message of fuel conservation and greener environment across the india so there many many places have held this campaign and it has been started from the manipur see pcra is a registered society set up under the aegis of ministry of petroleum and natural gas and it helps the government in proposing the policies and strategies for the petroleum conservation i repeat again pcra will help the government in proposing policies and strategies for the petroleum conservation so we'll see the question now saksham 2022 is related to what it is related to the fuel conservation campaign okay next next issue so union cabinet on wednesday approved the continuation of rashtriya gram swaraj abhiyan till 2025 26 with an outlay of 5911 crores so this particular scheme is known by every one i guess so most of us we know what is rgsa rashtriya gram swaraj abhiyan and features of this also might have been known by everyone so it is an centrally sponsored scheme which is extended for a period of 5 years that is up to 2026 okay it is extended for a period of 5 years and it is extended to all states and union territories to all the states and union territories and it also includes institutions of rural government where panchayats do not exist okay then this was launched in the year 2016 and 17 by the ministry of panchayat raj and was approved by union cabinet for implementation from the financial year 2018-19 to 21 22 so it it was supposed to be ended by this year but there is now an extension of 5 years that is up to 25 to 26 and coming to the funding ratios here funding is in the ratio of 60 40 uh, please remember this funding ratio it is in the ratio of 60 40 for all the states except north east and some hilly states okay where the central and state ratio will be 9 is to 10 and for union territories it is 100% a centrally sponsored scheme okay for all the other states it is 60 40 uh, whereas for 60 is central 40 is state and for the northeast and hilly states 90% is center 10% is from the state side for union territories it is completely a spent 100% centrally sponsored scheme moving on to the question cabinet approves continuation of rashtriya gram swaraj abhiyan up to how many years it is up to 5 years okay it is up to 5 years then the next issue atal innovation mission okay so why uh, it's a very famous uh, scheme or very famous mission actually so why was this in the news so this atal innovation mission is also been extended till march 2023 okay it is extended up to march 2023 Okay, so what is the aim here? So I will first read the news. The Union Cabinet approved the continuation of the Atal Innovation Mission until March two thousand twenty-three, as per the official notification issued on eighth April. So along with the extension of the mission, it has also been accorded additional integrated targets, including setting up of remember this. Okay, setting up of ten thousand. 
Atal Tinkering Labs as well as 101 Atal Incubation Centers. Okay, and apart from this, the mission will also support 2000 startups via the Atal New India Challenges. With the added targets, a new allocation of rupees 2000 crore has been attributed to the establishment of establishment and supporting the beneficiaries. So here, the it it mainly works on its intended targets of creating an innovation culture and entrepreneurial ecosystem in the country. So according to the statement, so what are we able to understand here is its goals are mainly to include or building of 10,000 Atal Tinkering Labs and 101 Atal Incubation Centers and sponsoring 200, okay, 200 business or startups through the Atal New India Challenges. So what might be the question? So Atal Innovation Mission is extended till it is March 2023. See, many questions can be framed. So I have given the complete information so that you should not be missing any point there. Okay. The next issue. National Safe Motherhood Day is celebrated on. See, a very simple topic and very simple question. Please remember it. National Safe Motherhood Day is observed every year on April 11th on april 11 and the campaign was launched by white ribbon alliance it was launched by white ribbon alliance next news so uh infosys so i've uh, you can see the picture of infosys which will be always in news very very important okay so the information Technology giant infosys and rolls royce on thursday inaugurated their joint aerospace engineering and digital innovation center in bangalore okay remember this aerospace engineering and digital innovation center in bangalore india fine so this is mainly to provide high-end research and development services it is mainly to provide R&D services which are integrated with advanced digital capabilities to Rolls-Royce Engineering and group business serves from their services from the India. So they might ask a question where exactly this aerospace engineering and this digital innovation center which is a joint venture of Infosys and Rolls-Royce is being held is being situated at. So it is being planned in the Bangalore. Okay. The next issue. UKDR becomes first country to give legal rights to wild animals. So what does this mean for the conservation? That is very important topic to analyze because it's it's very difficult to get the legal rights for the humans in many terms. Of course, the constitution defines it, but still uh, we know it because what happens in the daily lives, everyone have experienced in one or the other point of time. So in that case, a country has given the legal rights to wild animals. One should be really uh, grateful and it makes sense also. Okay. So what is the issue? It is the first country to give legal rights to wild animals. Remember, there might be a very chance of asking this, okay, UKDR. So, UKDR, it is in South America, fine, it's in South America. This has made the history, this has made the history by becoming the first country to recognize the legal rights of individual wild animals, okay, of individual wild animals. And what the statement or what the content is, is, the wild animals possess distinct legal rights, including to exist, to develop their innate instincts and to be free from disproportionate cruelty, fear and distress. So this is the claim. I repeat it again. So they have distinct legal rights, which includes to exist, firstly, to exist. And the second one is to develop their innate innate instincts innate instincts and to be free from disproportionate cruelty cruelty fear and distress 
people who are pet lovers will definitely will will make sense to them definitely of course it should make sense to everyone but remember ukdr is the country okay so what question may be asked on this which is the first country to give legal rights to wild animals the answer is the ukdr okay the next issue bengaluru joins a global network of silk cities again i'm repeating people who are preparing for karnataka state civil services or karnataka government examinations please uh, keep a note of this bengaluru has become the first indian city to get into the global network of silk cities okay this is the first indian city to join this particular network there are nine countries okay there are nine countries in this network and 13 cities here 13 cities of nine countries are there in this particular network and why is this network made so this network helps artisans and craftsmen to exchange the knowledge uh, build trade relationships and understand various craftsmanship techniques here so which are the countries here are the countries france china brazil japan uzbekistan georgia italy and spain so here are the eight countries and recently the ninth country is india okay india is the ninth country and which is the central institute which deals with the silk in india is the central silk board okay it is central silk board and the headquarters is at bangalore and this also started in the year 1948 which is mainly functioning under the ministry of textiles remember this this is functioning under the ministry of textiles see this question may stand as a confusing one because in the question you may get it as which indian city uh, the first indian city to get into the global network of silk cities see the cities here are kanchipuram is also very famous for silk isn't it banaras is also very famous for silk Mysore is also very famous very famous for silk. We have the silk in the name of these cities Kanchipuram silk Banaras silk Mysore silk but we don't have any silk in the name of Bangalore. Do we have a silk named as Bangalore Bengaluru silk? No. But we have Kanchipuram silk Banaras silk Mysore silk. So our attention will be drawn towards these three options which are wrong and this will be the answer. Okay so be very cautious about such things. The next news so R Ashwin becomes first batsman batsman to get retired out in ipl history during rajasthan royals and lucknow super giants match so everyone might have uh, the knowledge of this particular news the ipl 2022 match that is between the rajasthan royals and lucknow super giants at the vankadesh stadium mumbai so uh, there are ashwin became the first batsman in the ipl history to be retired out he had scored 28 he had scored 28 of 23 balls against lucknow super giants and willingly he walked off the field in the 19th over declaring himself to be retired out so he became the first person in the whole ipl history okay so there are chances uh, this might be asked anyways everyone is uh, everyone might have been aware of this particular news so next issue kangra tea of himachal pradesh this is a sure shot question guys geographical indication tags have been asked in every question okay so every exam one or the other uh, gi tag question will be there so kangra tag to get european gi tag okay which is a very prestigious tag actually so very soon the kangra tag kangra t will be getting geographical indication tag from the european union all right and this will open the european markets for the product and remember this kangra t has already got geographical indication tag in the india in the year 2005 with the concerted efforts of the department so remember this is about to get the gi tag from the european union okay so this is from the himachal pradesh 
and these are the four departments which are involved in this it board i it board of the india regional office palampur cooperative and agricultural departments of the state and csir ihpt palampur and choudhury uh, sarvan kumar agriculture university palampur of himachal pradesh okay the next issue kaval uthavi app so what is this app about this app is launched by tamil nadu government and it was launched by tamil nadu cm mk stalin so this is mainly to seek the police assistance during any kind of emergency okay emergency police assistance assistance will be available by this particular app and it says the app has got 60 features okay 60 features and it shares the users live location to the control room as well it allows users to identify the nearest police station or the patrolling vehicle okay so here is the news so it has got 60 features and the app comprises an emergency help and dial facility as well once the person who is in a danger dials it the live location of the person will be shared to the police of that particular location or the control room or they can also identify the nearing patrolling vehicle also okay this is the next issue tour of duty scheme what is this tour of duty scheme so this is very much in the news guys tour of duty so this is uh, finalized by the department of uh, military affairs so it is also called as the agnipath scheme uh, which is a, a new name which is given to this tour of duty okay agnipath scheme is the new name of the tour of duty which is give, which has been given by the indian army so what the scheme does is it will allow the youngsters to enlist in the army as soldiers for 3 years okay they will uh, they will select the sol- they'll select the youngsters and they'll appoint them as the soldiers in the indian army for 3 years and they will be called as the agnivers or fire warriors okay agnivers or fire warriors and then after completion of the service of 3 years the defense forces will have the option of retaining some of the best talents with releasing the others for civilian jobs so few who are the best uh, who are best for the indian army will be retained and remaining will be selected for other civilian jobs okay remember it is also called as the agnipath scheme and this is being launched on the experimental basis so if it is successful then it will be continued the next news zero coupon bonds zero coupon bonds are bonds that do not pay interest during the life of the bonds but the investors buy zero coupon bonds at a deep discount from their face value which is the amount the investor will receive when the bond matures or comes due so here there is no interest but the bond is available at a very cheap rate or discounted rate as compared to the face value so uh, when the bond matures whatever the maturity amount will be available since he has bought it for a very discounted rate so the returns will be high here okay the central why it is in news is the CBDT that is central board of direct taxes has amended the income tax rules to allow infrastructure debt funds to issue the zero coupon bonds so there are chances of asking what are the zero coupon bonds so please uh, remember this next news karnataka midday meals scheme midday meals is there in the karnataka from a long time but why it is in news again is so it is uh, karnataka government is planning to provide eggs under the okay eggs under the midday meal scheme for the school children so that is why it is in the news so what exactly the midday meal scheme does is it guarantees one meal to all the children in the government and aided schools and madrasa supported under the samagra shiksha so students up to class 8 are guaranteed one nutritional cooked meal at least for 200 days in a year and this is working under the ministry of hrd and this was launched in the year 1995 and revamped in 2004 so since it is a very uh, 
well known skin everyone might have known the details of this but still for your information here is the uh, pick of that why it is in news now in the current issue is it is because they are planning to provide eggs here okay then the next issue mukhya mantri udyam kranti this is a scheme which is been uh, launched in madhya pradesh by chief minister shivraj singh chauhan so he launched the yojana to provide 1 lakh to 50 lakh rupees loan to youth under the scheme for the self employment okay from 1 lakh to 50 lakh rupees loan is been provided for the youth under the self employment and the special feature of this is the state government would provide a 3% interest subsidy as well as the bank guarantee okay so 3% interest interest subsidy i repeat it here 3% interest subsidy is been given as well as bank guarantee is given here there is no need of uh, the person is applying to provide any guarantee here the bank guarantee will be given by the scheme and this is mainly to promote the msme startups i have already discussed msme in the previous video what is the importance why exactly msme are being stressed upon okay so here is the news we shall read it chief minister shuraj Singh Chauhan will launch Mukhya Mantri Udyam Kranti Yojana on April 5th. The ambitious scheme giving an opportunity to start their own business will be launched at Khushboo Thakre International Convention Center in the state capital. So Commissioner Industry and MSMEP uh, Narahari has informed that the scheme has been made self-employment friendly as per the wishes of Chief Minister. In this in this loans ranging from 1 lakh to 50 lakh will be made available to the youth for self employment the speciality of the scheme is that state government will also give 3% interest subsidy along with bank guarantee okay so next issue china successfully launched new satellite for earth observation beijing has successfully launched a new earth observation satellite which will become part of its land sea radar satellite constellation and capture the fine resolution images to help beijing safeguard its maritime rights and the interests so what you have to remember here is what is the purpose of the satellite it's mainly to safeguard its maritime rights and interests here as well So the name of the satellite is Gofun 303. This was launched from Chikwen Satellite Launch Center by the Long March 4C rocket. So you have to remember this one name, Chikwen Satellite Launch Center and Long March 4C rocket, and the name of the satellite Gofun 303. And then what is the uh, purpose of launching it? It is mainly to safeguard the maritime rights and the interests. Okay. Next issue. Dornier aircraft flight. Uh, remember this issue again. See, the Ministry of Civil Aviation has announced the launch of the first commercial flight of the Made in India, that is Dornier two twenty eight. It this has been made by HAL and it is delivered to Alliance Air. So aircraft will link five remote towns of Arunachal Pradesh to Assam's Dibrugarh boosting the boosting the air connectivity in the northeastern re region of the country and it's a part of government's Uday Desh ka Aam Nagrik Udan scheme okay so remember this anything which is related to northeast will always stand as an important news guys so please uh, make a note of this the name is Dornier 228 Okay, so these are a few issues which were important in the second week of the April. And again, as I said earlier, the notes is available in the addresses which has been uh, given at the beginning of the video as well as in the description box. So please find them. If each and every issue is been given in detail in the notes, so which will be very helpful for everyone whoever is preparing for the examinations. Please try to refer the notes. Okay so I'll see you all guys in the next video that is in the next week with the April third week's important issues thank you